As I headed to work, I couldn't help but think about a conversation my wife had brought up during dinner the previous evening. It wasn't the first time we had discussed such topics, but lately, it seemed to be on her mind more frequently, and I was curious about why it had become so important to her. She encouraged me to recall how many women I had been involved with before we committed to each other exclusively. Additionally, she wanted to know if I still had any lingering fantasies about my past partners or if I ever thought about them during our intimate moments. After five years of marriage, the simple answer was that my wife and I had built a relationship based on trust, respect, love, intimacy, and friendship, even though it wasn't perfect. I believed these elements were essential for any successful relationship, and I assumed Molly shared the same perspective. It felt like we were living a dream life stable income, a strong marriage, a beautiful home, the means for vacations, and the enjoyment of fine dining, wines, and entertainment. I am William Harrison, but my friends call me Billy. My wife's name is Molly. During my childhood, I stayed in shape by playing football and hockey year-round and dedicating time to weightlifting. Nowadays, I maintain my fitness through running and actively participating in the adult soccer league, occasionally indulging in pond hockey. My beloved wife Molly, with her radiant eyes, flawless complexion, and lovely lips, possessed the ability to captivate anyone with her smile and engaging conversations on a wide range of topics. Her genuine interest in others made her an exceptional listener and an impartial advisor. Though her friendly demeanor might have seemed like flirting or casual behavior at times, it never bothered me because Molly knew how to keep conversations respectful and appropriate. In my eyes, Molly had a near-perfect character, with the only occasional annoyance being a minor flaw that occasionally led to emotional discussions between us. While these disagreements seldom escalated into full-blown arguments, Molly's unwavering determination, once she made up her mind, could make it challenging for me to change her perspective, especially in matters without clear scientific evidence. Both of us got married shortly after college, having exclusively dated during our final two years of university. It's safe to say that Molly didn't have much experience in choosing partners before our marriage. In contrast, I led a more adventurous life during high school and the first two years of college, exploring relationships with various women. By the age of 19, I considered myself fortunate. When Molly inquired about my ability to satisfy her, I openly acknowledged the influence of my previous experiences. This revelation made her feel envious as she realized the missed opportunities and diverse encounters she had not had. I worked as a mechanical engineer at Abbott Labs, where I designed and tested injection molding components for medical devices. My latest hobby involves restoring a 2005 Winnebago B-Class van, while Molly excelled in her career as a CPA, holding a coveted position at a top accounting and consulting firm. Her job provided a stable income with manageable stress levels, occasionally involving business trips where she accompanied junior accountants during company audits. These trips ensured comprehensive coverage and adherence to the organization's principles of exceptional customer service and detailed reporting. In the past month, Molly embarked on several trips with a recent graduate named Andrew, who had started a three-year journey to become a certified public accountant, CPA. This path involved qualifications and rigorous tests. After their initial trip, Molly briefly mentioned Andrew, but had not brought him up since. As our life progressed, I couldn't help but notice subtle changes in Molly's behavior and communication with me. She became less energetic, sociable, and open in our interactions. Additionally, Molly started coming home from work later than usual on multiple occasions in recent weeks. During a passionate moment, Molly ardently undressed me and led me to our bed. Throughout this intimate moment, I sensed an intensified desire in her. After making love, I went downstairs to cook, planning to address the issue when she joined me in the kitchen. When Molly eventually came downstairs and took her seat, I mustered the courage to broach the topic that needed discussion. Encouraging Molly to express her thoughts first, I reassured her of my unwavering love and trust. Molly responded playfully, which heightened my anxiety. She made light of the serious tone of our conversation, joking about how discussions that began with, we need to talk, often signaled the end of a marriage. Dismissing my worry, Molly assured me that there was nothing negative. In fact, she believed what she had to share would bring joy to both of us. Struggling to articulate my thoughts, 
I continued expressing my concern about a shift in our relationship. Molly interrupted, referring to our recent intimate encounter and questioning why I felt that way. I clarified that it wasn't what I meant, but my anxiety persisted. Since Molly had brought up our passionate moment, I couldn't help but inquire about what had sparked such intense passion that she practically tore off my clothes. Molly's demeanor instantly changed, showing tension, concern, and guilt. She defensively suggested that if I wasn't satisfied with her strong attraction to me, maybe I should address the issue myself. Noticing this change, I questioned Molly about it, expressing my observations of her anxiety and guilt along with her defensive reaction. I urged her to acknowledge this and pleaded for honesty, asking her to tell me what was truly happening. I stressed the importance of honesty and clarity. Molly's tone softened as she apologized, explaining that she hadn't meant to react that way. She expressed the need to share what was going on, emphasizing her boundless love for me and the significance of our life together. Molly spoke sincerely during our conversation, her tone filled with confidence and tenderness. Expressing my heightened concern, I asked if she was cheating on me, fearing the worst. Molly, sounding offended but determined, denied any betrayal of trust or unfaithfulness. She reassured me of her respect for me and our relationship. Despite my concerns, Molly encouraged me to listen without making hasty judgments. She explained her intention to discuss something important and stressed the importance of having an open conversation. Molly reiterated her commitment to our relationship, expressing her desire to create a future together, have children, grow old as partners, and be with me for life. She prepared me for the challenge of comprehending what she was about to reveal, asking that I carefully listen and consider the full context. Molly clarified that she had been talking about Andrew, her colleague with whom she had gone on business trips. Alongside these trips, she had lunch, attended happy hours, and even had dinner with him last week. Molly flatly stated that she hadn't cheated or engaged in a romantic relationship. She acknowledged her actions, but insisted it wasn't cheating on me. I want to stress that I truly want you to hear me out, and I apologize if my previous statements seemed contradictory, Molly said. You're right. I crossed a line by spending time with Andrew without informing you. However, I want to assure you that I don't love him. We had a flirtation that initially seemed innocent but gradually became more questionable. Everything changed when he expressed his desire for a physical relationship. Despite being seven years younger, incredibly fit, and very handsome, she continued, I needed him to understand that my feelings toward him were passionate, not love. In a fit of anger, I confronted him, asking if he was leaving me, if he loved him, or if they had already been intimate. He reassured me, saying that he wanted to emphasize once again that he hadn't been intimate with Andrew or anyone else, Molly explained. He clarified that this was part of the problem and asked me to listen. He stressed that he only loved me. Andrew is younger, and I could never develop romantic feelings for him. However, before I met you, I had limited experience. Sometimes I feel that I missed out on certain experiences that you had before we became a couple. The thought that this young man to whom I am undoubtedly attracted desires an intimate relationship with me troubles me, Molly continued. Andrew and I flirted at work today, which may partly explain why I came home with such a strong desire, longing for your love. She noticed my reaction as my pulse quickened and hurried to clarify. Billy, I didn't express that properly. I love you and our intimate relationship means more to me than anything else. But it was difficult for me to shake off Andrew's infatuation, and I made the difficult decision to act accordingly and engage in an intimate relationship with him as a one-time experience before we fully commit to building our future together. I shared my need to have one last experience of connecting with another man, believing that I deserved it, Molly admitted. She asked for understanding and permission, wanting to convey her sincerity and never wanting to cheat and respecting our relationship. She discussed it openly and sought my consent while also making it clear that she had already made her decision about what to do next. Molly was taken aback by the anger in my eyes as I contemplated her words. In response, she bravely stated that her love was exclusively for me. She expressed her desire to spend her entire life married to me and grow old together, making it clear that what she felt for another man was not love. Struggling to come to terms with the situation, I emphasized that I understood her perspective viewing it as a one-time opportunity 
to fulfill desires and gain experience. Nevertheless, I made it clear that I felt deeply hurt by her request, and the implication that my consent was a test of my love. I found it difficult to comprehend how agreeing to something beyond our commitments could repair or strengthen our relationship. As I rose from the table, a mix of resentment and anger reflected in my eyes. It was evident that Molly could sense the repercussions of her words. I hoped that in this moment, she would contemplate whether her actions could destroy our marriage and the bonds that held us together. I needed her to grasp the significance of her request and the potential consequences it held for our relationship. I acknowledged that, when she discovered my emotional connection with one of her colleagues, she felt betrayed. Conversations and walks that resembled intimacy could be seen as a form of infidelity. I recognized the pain and mistrust this had brought into our relationship. I attempted to convey that I hadn't engaged in physical intimacy with this man, admitting to a few exchanged kisses after happy hours, and acknowledging that it didn't excuse or justify my behavior. I understood the disbelief and resentment in his response, and sincerely apologized for the pain I had caused him. Despite always believing in his unwavering trust and loyalty, I admitted that learning about his actions shattered this belief. In response, I retorted bitterly, Fine, Molly, maybe I'll seek a meaningless romance of my own, and we'll see if you maintain that belief. With those words lingering, I abruptly stood, grabbed my keys, and headed for the door. Molly called out to me, her voice pleading, Billy, please reconsider and come back. I understand that you may think this situation could lead to personal growth and allow you to provide even more love and attention in the future, but Molly, you're deluding yourself right now. I can't fathom how you expect me to accept your betrayal and just endure it while claiming to love me. The truth is, I'll never truly bridge this trust gap. If you continue this affair, it means the end of our relationship. Do you comprehend the gravity of this? With those words hanging in the air, I made my way to my car, opting to put some distance between us. Molly called for me to return, pleading, Billy, no, please come back. Anger and pain consumed my thoughts, and I could only gaze at her in disbelief before driving off into the night. It was an overwhelming moment of shock and confusion. Seeking solace, I stayed at the Hilton Hotel in a nearby suburb for the night. Trying to escape the turmoil, I spent too much time at the hotel bar, drowning my sorrows in alcohol. Eventually, I returned to my room and collapsed into bed, still reeling from the shock that Molly considered such a situation acceptable. Ignoring her calls and voicemails, I remained stunned and couldn't comprehend how she could profess her love for me while insisting on violating our marriage vows. I was well aware of Molly's stubbornness when she made up her mind, but this was not the time for it. I considered yielding and leaving everything as it was, but I feared that it would be a mistake that could destroy our marriage. I had to make her understand before the situation became irreversible. However, doubt began to creep in. Was it already too late? Even if I managed to convince her this time, how long before she would act behind my back again? This would undoubtedly shatter the remnants of trust, respect, and ultimately, our marriage. On the other hand, I understood that if I allowed her to proceed, I would never see her in the same light. As I weighed the options, doubt and fear clouded my thoughts. If I consented to her request, how long would it be before she felt compelled to seek comfort in another man's arms again? Would she resent me for letting someone else fulfill her desires and not demanding her loyalty solely to me? It became clear that there was no good choice, and a sense of impending doom hung over our relationship. Something inside me suggested that our path was already leading to a tragic ending. Finally, I reached a decision. My only glimmer of hope rested on convincing her to reconsider and attend counseling with me. Together, perhaps we could uncover the root cause of her desire for intimacy outside our marriage. With this choice in mind, I marked Wednesday on the calendar as the day to broach this topic and present my arguments. Feeling the heavy burden of pain and sadness, I decided to call in sick at work. As soon as I learned that Molly was away, I returned to our house and immersed myself in completing some unfinished work on the van. Engaging in physical labor provided temporary relief from the constant emotional turmoil. I successfully installed and connected the solar panel, ensured all electrical components were in working order, and refilled the water tanks. I knew that with one more day of work on assembling the body, the van would be ready for our journey by Thursday. 
As Molly's return drew near, I buried myself in these tasks, seeking solace amid the heartache. After carefully researching divorce proceedings, financial matters, and seeking professional guidance, I felt I had a preliminary plan of action for both potential outcomes that awaited me. With a sense of urgency, I surveyed our home and compiled a list of my personal possessions, focusing on items of great importance to me. Time was of the essence, and I managed to visit the bank before Molly's arrival. At the bank, I acted swiftly, canceling our joint credit card and opening one solely in my name. Similarly, I closed our shared checking account and established an individual account under my name. I decided to use funds from our shared account to prepay the mortgage over the next two months. Afterward, I divided the remaining balance in half, issuing Molly a check for her share and placing my portion into a personal savings account. Amidst mixed emotions, I sought solace in a familiar pub I frequented. There, I sipped on beer and indulged in a hamburger, preparing myself for the impending conversation with Molly. Around six o'clock in the evening, Molly returned home, and upon seeing me, she immediately expressed her concern and disappointment about my sudden departure. She pleaded with me not to leave without informing her of my well-being. I understand that you're hurting, but I was genuinely concerned about your safety and should have ensured you knew I was okay. Molly, I used to have absolute faith in the durability and strength of our love. However, recent events have cast doubt on the foundation of our relationship. Just a week ago, I could never have imagined that you would ask me for permission for an extramarital affair, only to continue as if nothing had occurred. I find it hard to understand how you can profess your love for me, talk about our enduring future together, and yet seek my permission for an extramarital affair. Molly, please know that I'm not questioning your love for me, but it's crucial to grasp that seeking permission doesn't erase the fact that it goes against the vows we made to each other. This remains a breach of trust and our commitments. It's essential to realize the gravity of this situation and the impact it can have on our relationship, both now and in the future. Molly, if we talk about drama and immaturity, what I'm experiencing right now far surpasses that. I look at the person I once loved, and I'm uncertain if I truly know who you are. You're asking me to accept that you love me, yet you're also asking me to accept that you're planning an intimate encounter with another man over the weekend and then return to our previous state as a couple and partners. Deep down, I know that things can never be the same again. Our relationship can never revert to what it was before. Consider this, Molly. How would you feel if I engaged in intimacy with someone else and then told you it's just a regular thing? It wouldn't be fair, and you're aware of that. Yes, I've had experiences with other women in the past, but that doesn't excuse or make this situation any less painful. I understand that you feel like you missed out on various opportunities in your past, while I had such experiences. In response to your question, I would say that if I initiated an affair, I would expect consequences, including the possibility of being asked to leave and the uncertainty of forgiveness. So why should the circumstances be any different for you? Why shouldn't I contemplate asking you to leave? And why do you think forgiving you would be easy for me? Molly was overwhelmed by emotions. Tears welled up in her eyes as she responded. I interrupted, pointing out that her statement wasn't entirely accurate. I asked if she had already committed to proceeding with the plan, if she had given her potential partner a promise. Molly attempted to defend herself, insisting that he wasn't her lover. However, she eventually admitted that she had arranged a trip with her potential partner starting the following morning and lasting until Sunday evening. Upon hearing this, I expressed deep concern and conveyed that if she went through with it, things wouldn't simply return to normal come Monday and our relationship wouldn't be the same. Molly gasped in response. She retreated to the kitchen and took a seat at the table, pleading with me not to let this situation ruin our marriage and life together. She emphasized that I had always been and would always be her husband the one with whom she wanted to raise their children. Feeling the profound disconnect between us, I shook my head and gently stated, Molly, we're just not on the same page anymore. If everything you've said is true, you wouldn't even consider going through with what you're planning for Saturday. It seems this conversation won't lead to a resolution. I want to make it clear that if you proceed with your plan, our relationship will end. I'll return on Friday evening, as previously mentioned. Molly, Please don't ask me to stay when you're making a choice that puts our marriage at risk. 
We can't just brush this aside. Let's try to find a way out of this difficult situation. I'll bring dinner around 7 on Friday night. By the way, what time is Andrew picking you up on Saturday morning? Just so I know, Molly replied. I'll ask him to pick me up at 11 a.m., but please understand that you don't have to leave. In fact, I want you to meet him. Anger welled up inside me, and I retorted, suggesting that if I were to meet him, I might consider asking both of them to leave. Instead of reacting with anger, I proposed that she should consider expressing gratitude for not completely cutting her out of my life. I urged her to think carefully about her actions before our Friday meeting, emphasizing the significant damage this situation was inflicting on our relationship, which she seemed to underestimate. I made it unequivocal that this was a promise I intended to uphold. I conveyed that if she were to end this affair and inform him that she doesn't want to meet him anymore, either now or in the future, and if she commits to attending counseling sessions with me to work on repairing our relationship, then there might be a chance for us to recover. But if she doesn't, then I'm certain our marriage will be over. Please give me your answer on Friday evening. In the meantime, take the time to genuinely contemplate the consequences of your actions for our lives. With a heavy heart, I turned and left the house, returning to the Hilton Hotel, where I reserved a room for the night from Wednesday to Thursday. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, I contacted my boss and explained the extraordinary family circumstances requiring a week's absence. Despite his reluctance to delve into the details, he reluctantly granted me a day off. On Thursday morning, after Molly left for work, I returned to the house and began calmly packing my belongings. I carefully chose items that Molly wouldn't immediately notice were missing and prepared them for transport to my van. Additionally, I decided to visit the store to part with clothes I no longer wore and deemed unnecessary for my upcoming journey. I gathered all the tools, sports equipment, and recreational items that I didn't have room for and took them to my best friend Tom's house. I also shared several pen and ink drawings created by my uncle, knowing he'd appreciate them. As we sat at the table with beers in hand, I explained the situation and discussed the options I believed were available to me. Tom looked at me with disbelief and expressed strong doubts, insisting that Molly would never do such a thing to me. He emphasized how deeply in love Molly appeared to be with me. Tom questioned my confidence in the correctness of my decision, suggesting that there might be more to Molly's actions that required understanding. Right now, I feel incredibly lost and insecure. Everything I thought I knew has been shattered in one week, and Molly seems like a completely different person. Her actions have left me bewildered, and I'm trying to make sense of it all. Can't we just forgive and forget? Can't we seek advice and find a way to move forward? I told her that we still have a chance to salvage our relationship if she puts an end to this affair. But if she goes through with it, I see no path to reconciliation. I did my best to appeal to her reason, but now, on Friday evening, I hope that by showing love and care, she might be willing to heed the voice of reason. This is truly my last opportunity. It's difficult to witness the pain caused by my marriage, especially considering that we were once seen as a model of a healthy relationship. I'll explore all the potential paths for the future. I promised a friend to stay in touch, and once I have a new phone and number, I'll reach out to him. We'll keep each other informed. With these thoughts in mind, I went to the Verizon store to get a new phone and number. I secured a new phone and number, ensuring that our current plan was transferred solely to Molly's name. With practical matters settled, I returned home and refocused on the van. I completed the remaining cabinet work, took care of tasks like obtaining new license plates and updating insurance coverage. Then, I turned my attention to our home computer, meticulously removing all traces of personal emails and documents. I wanted to erase any remnants of my past life from the office. Additionally, I wrote a letter informing our family, friends, relatives, and colleagues about Molly's actions and my response to provide them with an explanation in this challenging situation. If, despite all my efforts, I failed to dissuade Molly from her decision, I'd have to explain to our family, friends, relatives, and colleagues that she chose to have an extramarital affair, actively seeking my approval. Despite my pleas for her to reconsider, I made it clear that I warned her this would lead to the end of our marriage, but she proceeded. I never wanted to discuss it, but I wanted people to know the truth about what happened. On Friday, 
I continued discussing the situation with the divorce lawyer to get advice on the potential outcome of our situation. Considering our comparable incomes and no children, I learned that the typical divorce scenario likely involves a 50-50 division of all assets. Though it was emotionally challenging, it was necessary to gather this information and prepare for the possibility of a trial. While most aspects of a potential divorce settlement seemed relatively straightforward, there was uncertainty about whether Molly would be entitled to half of my 401k retirement plan. Given that Molly had made substantial contributions for a long time, there were over $200,000 in deferred tax funds in this account. Additionally, Molly was covered by a defined benefit pension plan creating uncertainty about its impact on the divorce process. After careful consideration, I concluded that I had worked hard to save this money. Rather than risking a 50% loss due to my wife's infidelity, I decided to accept a 40% tax penalty and withdraw the money before the divorce process began. It was a tough choice, but it provided some control and protection for the financial assets I had worked hard to accumulate. I decided to postpone any financial decisions until the weekend, because I still held hope that I could convince Molly to change her mind and end this terrible situation. Despite all my attempts to reason with her, as Friday approached, I felt helpless and uncertain about our future, our marriage, and my love for her. Now everything was in Molly's hands, and I could only pray that she made the right choice. I returned to our house and anxiously waited for Molly to come home from work. When she entered the kitchen, her face lit up with excitement expressing how much she missed my presence at home. She sincerely thanked me for coming home, expressing that she really missed me and couldn't bear it when I wasn't with her. She asked me to promise not to leave like that again. I acknowledged her feelings, stating that she was right, and we loved each other, emphasizing the importance of being together. I suggested she freshen up and take a shower, while I prepared to light the grill for a lovely dinner together. I mentioned that we should cherish what our marriage meant to us that night. Molly became visibly upset when I mentioned the uncertain future of our relationship. She replied, growing increasingly annoyed, asking me to stop questioning our marriage as it upset her. I sighed, proposing that we postpone the conversation for now and focus on enjoying the evening. I assured her that we could continue the conversation later. I emphasized the need to focus on the pleasant part of the evening. I replied, certainly Molly. I promise that I'll stay with you tonight, and you won't have to worry about me being upset or leaving. When Molly returned from her shower, I turned to her and couldn't help but express my admiration and sincere praise. She responded with a mischievous smile, indicating her desire to give me a glimpse of what our upcoming weeks would be like. Molly revealed that she had purchased different outfits for us to enjoy, and playfully mentioned it was time to move on to the food. She expressed hunger but a preference for starting with dessert. We quickly began our meal, finishing the main course in a hurry, eager to savor the sweet finale and approach the coming weeks with excitement. Later, I gently carried Molly upstairs and placed her on the bed after our intimate encounter. She was breathless and completely satisfied, soon falling asleep. The next morning, Molly woke up at 8.30 a.m., signaling the need to prepare for the day ahead. With Andrew scheduled to pick her up at 11 a.m., Molly's mind was filled with guilt, anxiety, and a hidden desire. Despite wondering if anything could surpass the passionate lovemaking from the previous night, Molly's determination reminded her of the commitments she had made and the necessity of following through with her decision. Despite her doubts, Molly chose to proceed with the planned date, experiencing a mix of emotions and uncertainty about what lay ahead. Expressing her gratitude for the incredible night, Molly conveyed her love and appreciation, saying, This is how I envision our future. I love you deeply, and thank you for last night. When no response came, Molly focused on finishing her scrambled eggs and declined additional food. She mentioned needing to prepare for brunch with Andrew at 11 a.m. and wanted to keep her appetite for it. Planning to freshen up, take a shower and get ready, Molly expressed her need for privacy. I nodded allowing her to go about her morning routine without interruption. I requested a heartfelt goodbye before she left for the weekend, expressing my desire to understand the significance of our love and the events of the previous night. Molly interrupted, urging me to stop, insisting it was a one-time occurrence that wouldn't alter our love. 
feeling a mix of anger and sadness, I asserted that I wouldn't leave without a proper farewell. Meeting my gaze, Molly's cheeks flushed as she confirmed our enduring connection and envisioned a future filled with growth and strength. Responding with frustration, I expressed my exasperation at her capacity to believe in such words. Molly's understanding demeanor shifted as she comprehended the weight of my remarks, and tears welled up as she hurried to the bathroom. After a quick shower and meticulous makeup application, Molly emerged with a weekend bag, aware of the limited time. Witnessing her prepare to meet another man filled me with immense anger and pain. Molly asked if I was okay, expressing concern, and I struggled for words, emphasizing my desire for a special celebration of our love. A heavy silence hung in the air as Molly absorbed my words, experiencing deep emotions. She implored me not to view this as our last night together and encouraged us to look to the future where we could overcome this challenge and emerge stronger than ever. Molly stressed the importance of addressing deeper issues in our relationship and asked me to stop insisting that everything was falling apart. Before Molly could respond, a car approached and she inquired if she should let Andrew in, hoping his introduction would ease my concerns. I strongly rejected the idea, threatening regrettable actions if she allowed him inside. My words lingered, revealing the depth of my suffering, leaving Molly shocked. Realizing further conversation would only escalate tension, she silently picked up her bag and headed for the door. I sat there, lost in thought, recognizing that Molly was determined to go ahead with her plans, despite my efforts to prevent the affair from destroying our marriage. After 30 minutes, feeling a need for change, I began moving my important belongings into the van. I noticed Molly's wedding rings left on the dresser, and with a mix of sadness and resignation, I carefully put them in my pocket. Two hours later, I had securely packed all my significant belongings into the van, a tangible reminder of the decision we both had to confront. Overwhelmed by anger and pain, I wandered through the house in a state of confusion. The wedding album caught my attention, filled with 40 precious photos capturing memories of our wedding five years ago. Unable to contain my disappointment, I cut a deep cross through the plastic covering each photo and tossed them into the fireplace. The crackling flames devoured what had once symbolized our love. Sitting at the desk, my heart heavy with grief and determination, I began composing my final letter to Molly. Molly, this is my farewell message. I couldn't bear to see you walk away from me in our once cherished marriage. Your wedding rings left behind symbolize the abandonment of our commitments, evading the reality of your infidelity in pursuit of a free weekend. It's difficult for me to fathom how you could believe, without a shred of doubt, that having an affair and then returning to our marriage as if nothing had changed is acceptable. I genuinely can't grasp your thought process and how breaking our sacred wedding vows could seem okay to you. Your actions have caused me immense humiliation and disrespect in our marriage. Believing that a seemingly harmless affair over the weekend wouldn't affect my feelings for you is a grave misunderstanding. In reality, it meant everything. Your actions have illuminated a significant difference between my love for you and the love you claimed to feel, if it existed at all. It laid bare a vast gap between what I believed I deserved and what I mistakenly thought we shared. You've hurt me more deeply than any other experience. You took my love, ripped it out of my chest, and callously trampled on it. The initial betrayal occurred when you began flirting with your lover during dinners and happy hours. Kissing during these encounters intensified your infidelity, which you wrongly perceived as acceptable. However, the ultimate blow to our mutual love occurred when you assumed I would agree to your betrayal. How could you believe you deserved this and that my love for you would tolerate such betrayal? I'm astounded by how your mind arrived at such an idea. Attempting to reason with you, I made it clear that our love, marriage, and friendship would never remain unaffected. Instead, you dismissed my concerns, labeling me as immature and dramatic. I implored you to halt this weekend affair before it happened, offering to consult a psychologist and make efforts to salvage our marriage. My words were ignored, despite warning that the incredible night of love we shared would be our last if you continued. You chose to disregard me, assuming I would obediently stay by your side. I don't understand how you believed I'd agree to such betrayal. It's as if you never really knew me. I trusted you so deeply that I failed to realize you were capable of this level of destruction. 
While I could physically intervene, I knew it would only breed resentment and gradually dismantle our marriage. Believing this to be an isolated incident is self-deception. If this experience was unsatisfactory, how long until you seek another attraction? And if it was pleasurable, how soon until your fantasies compel you to repeat it? These questions haunt me, underscoring the crux of the issue. You might conceal future infidelities, especially considering the devastating consequences we now face, but I am certain these betrayals would persist, further eroding the fabric of our relationship. The truth is, I can't be in a relationship without trust, and your actions have utterly shattered my trust. I can't envision loving you again while tormented by thoughts of your presence beside me or your mind wandering to other lovers. During our intimate moments, it felt like all the love, respect, trust and friendship you professed were washed away, leaving me with empty promises. I can't muster the strength to forgive you for the pain you've caused, and I can't envision ever trusting you or maintaining a friendly relationship. Just as you callously tore love from my chest, I must cut you out of my life. There are practical matters I need to address. I've divided our property and covered the mortgage payments for the next two months. Enclosed is a check for your share of our joint accounts. I cancelled our joint Verizon account as of Monday, so you'll need to start your own. Insurance policies and joint credit cards have been cancelled as well, and I've legally removed my name from the mortgage loan, preparing a document relinquishing ownership of the house and transferring it to you. It's your choice whether to sell or continue living there, as it's no longer my home and I won't return. As you can see, I sold my car and chose a van. I may eventually pawn your wedding rings for gas money. I admit that I acted impulsively in the midst of pain and anger. In a moment of frustration and despair, I used a box cutter to cut through our wedding album, leaving the remnants scattered in the fireplace. If you deem it appropriate, please burn them. It would symbolize the end of our marriage. I also confess to sending an email to our friends, relatives, colleagues, and acquaintances, informing them of your decision to continue an affair outside our marriage. I announced my decision to leave you, giving you a day or two to consider how you want to present your side of the story. I strongly recommend taking responsibility for your actions as you move forward with your new life. You can pursue any experiences and relationships you desire, but I urge you to avoid getting involved with married individuals, as your actions have already caused enough harm to innocent lives. You're free to end our marriage, sell the house, move on, and shape your future. I leave these decisions in your hands because they no longer concern me. If I'm fortunate enough to find a woman who truly loves and respects me as I deserve, I'll be grateful for this opportunity in my life. Perhaps we can discuss divorce when the time is right. At the moment, my focus is elsewhere. I've decided to quit my job and cash out my 401. K. My sole plan now is to sever all ties with you and avoid any future encounters. When I depart, I'll take a left turn on the road, leaving memories of you behind in the rearview mirror. Farewell, Molly. Finally, I began sending the letter I wrote to all our friends, relatives, and acquaintances, scheduling the mailing for Monday. By then, I should have moved away from my previous life. With one last glance, I turned away and walked out the door, hurrying away from the remnants of my past. I drove along the banks of the mighty Mississippi, pondering my next moves. I decided to follow Molly's path from Minneapolis-St. Paul to the bustling city of New Orleans. Once I reach that destination, I'll have to make a crucial decision, metaphorically speaking, to the left or to the right. During the long hours on the road, Thoughts about Molly and whether I was making the right choice filled my mind. However, I concluded that now isn't the time to make immediate decisions about our future. It will be weeks before I can even contemplate the possibility of friendship, let alone staying married. In that moment, anger overshadowed any thoughts of reconciliation. But I understood that there might come a time when my anger subsides, and the desire to be with Molly outweighs the pain caused by her actions. Only then can I truly appreciate how much more important it is for me to be with her than without her. Molly had to explain her perplexing state of mind and the reasons behind her decision for a brief, intimate encounter to her parents, relatives, and friends. She expected it to be challenging for them to comprehend her train of thought or agree with her perspective. In fact, she found it difficult to grasp her own reasoning, let alone explain it to others. She convinced herself that this affair wouldn't affect her emotional state in any way. 
recognizing the serious challenges ahead for both her and us as a couple. I understood that any potential path to reconciliation would require sincere efforts to overcome the difficulties. Molly had to articulate the depth of her new understanding of the devastating impact her actions had on our marriage and the love we once shared. She had to confront the harsh reality of her self-centeredness and foolishness in underestimating the importance of loyalty, not just for me, but also for her own sense of integrity. Now, comprehending the consequences, Molly reached out to my best friend Tom Wickley, desperately seeking information about my whereabouts. She implored him to convey her heartfelt apologies, expressing her love and remorse. Molly wants me to tell you that she loves you very much, recognizes her mistakes, and is willing to do everything to make things right if you give her a chance, Tom conveyed on her behalf. She promises not to seek a divorce, and to remain faithful to our marriage vows, refraining from romantic relationships as long as we're married. Week after week, Molly anxiously waited for a response or a phone call, hoping for reconciliation. But there were no contacts as she clung to the hope of my return. About a month later, an unexpected incident occurred. Andrew opened the door and encountered an assailant wearing a mask and wielding a police baton. The attacker quickly struck Andrew twice, followed by painful blows to the groin. Before leaving, the attacker emphasized the importance of not getting involved with married women. After the attack, Andrew experienced excruciating pain, a reminder of the consequences when crossing boundaries. Of course, you know who the attacker was. I monitored Molly's life, wanting her to suffer as I did, perhaps even more. Despite Molly's claim that she would wait for me and not engage in romantic relationships, she brought another man to our house two months after my departure. It was hardly a friendly meeting. Soon after, she sold the house and moved to a modest apartment. Dreaming of breast augmentation, she opted for plastic surgery with the money from the house sale. Unfortunately, a blood clot formed a week later, leading to her sudden passing. Upon hearing this tragic news, I didn't shed a tear. Had I lost the capacity to feel love, anger, or regret for this woman?